So we're talking Ten Canoes. Uh, this is a Ralph De Heer film, um, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. I mean, the, the thing uh, that you need to know about the film is it's not this dreary, um, overly serious film. It's I mean, it's a comedy. It's about a group um, or this community, and they're essentially shit stirrers. And the thing about the film that I'm interested in talking about is that it it it's a, it's a comedy. It's an Australian comedy, and it actually uses uh, the tropes of the Australian comedy um, across its narrative. And that's very important to think about, and it's the, really the way I want to talk to the film, that it's not just this you know, indigenous film that is put with all the other indigenous films. Um, although, you know, it very much is an indigenous film. Um, but, but, you know, it, it's very much um, a comedy. And I'm just interested to know whether you like the film, uh, whether you laugh at the film, whether you think the film's good. The problem with um, indigenous films is often audiences become very nervous in assessing the film or... Um, making comments about the film. And I'm very much um, of, of the thinking that in order to really celebrate one film and really like one film, you've actually got to say if another film doesn't work. You know, David Stratton, Australian film reviewer, I mean, he sort of says, oh, well, I'm, I'm very positive about all Australian films. Or, I'm, I'm, you know, more positive than, say, films from other countries and i think that's a real problem because if if he's saying that well how can we believe anything he says because if he says that one film australian film's great it's like well are you just saying that because you want to support australian films and are you really supporting australian films by saying that anyway um so you know be honest with you know your responses um and i'm interested to know what you think now uh here is on the on the right of screen is the australian poster and um the tagline uh, was 150 spears, 10 canoes, three wives, trouble. Which we sort of sets up the whole idea of the film that is a comedy. And um, this is on the left-hand side, it's the UK poster. It says 10 canoes, which is actually the, uh, the tagline. 10 canoes, 150 spears, and three wives. Now, uh, the film is uh, quite accessible through... A number of um, viewing platforms, um, and the film did very well. And what's interesting to know is the film—it's like a national film, right? And I've given you a reading for this week, you know, really about the whole idea of the national cinema. And it is a national film in a certain degree, but it's a film that. Tra- you know, translated really well overseas, and that audiences really liked, um, and they responded to really well, and it won a number of audience awards. You know, that's when the audience gets to vote on the film that they really like at, at you know at a festival. So it's important to know that the film you know did um, you know did moderately well in Australia, but it also did well from a critical perspective overseas. Um, and it did really well at the festival. And why would a film like this play really well um, at a festival? And often, if you think of the festival audience, you know, the festival audience, it's a packed cinema, everyone's enthusiastic, um, you know, they're, they're just wanting to see a film that they wouldn't normally see. That's the film festival event. You know, you just go along to a whole bunch of films you've never seen and you never would see. And I think that's what, you know, that's why the film does really well. Um, at the festivals. Now, uh, Rolf to here is worth talking about because, um, so this is a list uh, that was just released. This is um, top, uh, you know, 25 films, even though you can only see 24 of them. Um, you, you, the best films of this century. And, uh, well, Fury Road, number one. Yeah, that's no surprise. I don't know why Animal Kingdom's there, because I've never really... I really think it's a terribly overrated film. Uh, good to see 
um, Samson Delilah, which is actually a terrific film. If you you know to watch that film on the big screen, you really get the greatness of that film. Uh, Chopper, of course, is absolutely wonderful, and the Babadook is. It's good to see the Babadook there. Um, now we're off to hit. Okay, so Ten Canoes is on the list. That's number twelve, and um, another one of his films is The Tracker, which is also um, on the list, and that's number eighteen. Now. Uh, the thing about Ralph to here is he's often made, he's really interested in, well, he's interested in the actor David Gulpilil, who narrates uh, um, Ten Canoes. And he's worked with him on a number of films, um, you know, Charlie's Country. Um, and then the tracker was uh, a hugely kind of um, critically discussed film when it came out where David Goldpillow plays a tracker, this kind of chained tracker. And you've got uh, Gary Sweet um, sort of playing the racist white cop. And it's sort of this whole thing of black versus white and you know, things that's going on. Now, the problem with the tracker, despite it being great in intention, is just an utterly awful film. And it's because Gary Sweet does not know how to act his way out of a wet paper bag. And... The problem with Ralph to here is he keeps casting Gary Sweet in his films. And Ralph to here needs to stop doing that. He needs to stop doing that right now. Ralph to here, if you're listening, stop giving Gary Sweet work. It doesn't make your film any better. David Gulpil, although, uh, you keep hiring him because he's um he always brings, you know, fascinating things um to um you know, to, to the, you know, all of the films he's in. And he's actually in a, a number of these films um, on this list that you're looking at. He's in The Tracker. He's in, well, he's in Ten Canoes. We can be heard in Ten Canoes. He's in uh, The Proposition and, um, you know, other, other films. And uh, Robert Proof Fence, is that, uh, that's not on the list. But uh, I thought that was, um, that was after 2000, wasn't it? I could be wrong. Anyway, enough of that. Anyway, um, but Ten Canoes is on the list, and I think that's important to note um, that it is actually on the list. Now, a couple of fast facts about the film. It's the first ever made a major Australian feature film completely filmed in an Indigenous Aboriginal language. And this is really interesting. When we're watching this film, think of this film in regard to accent. What is the Australian accent? And you've got an accent here which isn't the accent that we're used to. The fact that we are reading subtitles in this film, I think is very interesting. And it's actually, it forces a different type of viewing. What is that viewing? Do you like it? Do you like the difference with this film? Or do you find the whole thing kind of a bit challenging? Right. The canoes in the film were made according to original tribal methods. And um, they used directions from tribal elders who had not made them for some 50 years. Um, and you actually see them making these great canoes. And if anyone has been to uh, uh, Screen Worlds at Acme in Melbourne, you will see one of the canoes from the film actually on display. And it's an impressive looking uh, artifact. Right now, the film um, was uh, submitted for the best foreign language film category. So that's Australia's entry. 79th Academy Awards in 2007. But uh, I think the, the really interesting fact here is the film ranked 72 in Empire Magazine's The 100 Best Films of World Cinema. So in 2010, right, their list, 100 Best Films, World Cinema, and 10 Canoes is on it. So the thing is, it was picked up by all these countries as a, you know, as a world film. Um, you know, it wasn't this film that only worked with Australian audiences. And the thing about Ten Canoes, and the thing about Indigenous cinema, which is important to note, there's there's always this kind of thinking that, well, Indigenous cinema is a bit like, you know, African-American cinema in America. Or, and, and it's just not the case for one reason. In America, there's a very dedicated African-American film-going audience, Right? Films can be made for that market, African-American market. 
and those films can do really well. I'm not saying that only African Americans will enjoy those films, but it can be made in that kind of register. A film like Get Out being a good example. In Australia, there isn't that demographic, right? So an Indigenous film, although it can very much work with Indigenous audiences, right? Indigenous films are essentially being made for non-Indigenous audiences. And I think that's that's worth thinking about, um, what, actually, what's going on with a film like this, how the film is actually about Indigenous language, Indigenous culture, Indigenous community before white settlement, but essentially it's being made for non-Indigenous um, Australians or and un, non-Indigenous people around the world to understand what's actually going on here. Think about that and think about how the film is constructed and what how Ralph Tahir is trying to make a film that is actually quite accessible um, on a number of levels and just the very idea of genre and the way that he plays the genre being really interesting here. Okay, now Bruno Stars, he wrote a piece on Ten Canoes, which I haven't used, uh, but I might, I might give you the link to this piece. Now, the problem, the problem with Bruno Stars is, that, look, the, this is the title of his chapter, The Authentic Aboriginal Voice in Rolf de Heer's Ten Canoes. Right. Now, what the, the problem is the use of the term authentic, right? Rolf de Heer is not an Indigenous Australian. Rolf de Heer has never claimed to be an Indigenous Australian. No one has ever claimed that Rolf de Heer is an Indigenous Australian. Right. Now, a lot of criticism has continued to come at Rolf de Heer for being a non-Indigenous filmmaker making Indigenous cinema. And I think that's a bit unfair. And Marcia Langton, an Indigenous uh, spokesperson and you know, who's often commenting on films, you know, Indigenous representation in films, she has had a very interesting relationship with Rolf de Heer in that she was extremely critical of the tracker because he didn't actually consult with any Indigenous voices in the film, although Goldpool was in it, you know, he was just there as an actor. Um, but she was very positive with Ten Canoes because, you know, he is, you know, here is a filmmaker actually consulting with Indigenous Australians and things like this. And her whole argument is that just because you're not Indigenous doesn't mean that you can't make a film about Indigenous Australians, you know, and to say that only Indigenous filmmakers can make tell stories about Indigenous Australians is actually in itself racist because it's saying that all Indigenous Australians have the same point of view and have the same worldview and are essentially from the same region in Australia, which is not true. An Indigenous Australian from Melbourne, from uh, urban Melbourne, you know, like how are they, what's their story if they're telling a story about Northern Territory uh, rural Indigenous Australians. See what I'm saying? Like it's it's almost like each person, regardless of race, is actually has their own worldview and things like that. Right? Now, okay. Now, um, Rolf de Heer rejected claims that he's a white director making an Indigenous story. Right? Now, this is the thing. Uh, this is what he said. People talk about what is a white director doing making an Indigenous story. They're telling the story largely, and I am the mechanism by which they can and you will actually see that um, you know the the the, the film was um, not just credited to Ralph to hear. He was actually you know directed by Ralph to hear and you know the community. I think you know were, you know, were co-directors on the film. Uh, you know which is really interesting um, of what's actually going on, but. It's the whole idea of this authenticity and is there an authenticity and can a white director create a sense of authenticity? And when you're watching the film, are you feeling like you're watching an authentic um, story? Uh, which is worth uh, having a think about again. And um, the, the you may be thinking, I said, you know, it was nominated for an Academy Award. That must be the only Australian film ever nominated for Best Foreign Language. Well, that's actually not true. A Floating Life, which is a Clara Lau film, which is sort of this Asian-Australian film, and um, 
Spagnola, La Spagnola, which um, you may have guessed is a Spanish film in Spanish language. Now, uh, the international response is interesting. Um, now, David Stratton, he said, magnificent. Well, we're not going to listen to David Stratton because he thinks every Australian film is magnificent. So um, we'll leave David Stratton there. Um, <clears throat> but Variety um, from America, Anthropology and Entertainment are marvellously married in Rolf to Here's Ten Canoes. The first feature in an Australian Aboriginal language feels authentic. There it is again. The term, it feels authentic uh, to the core as it tells a cautionary tale set a thousand years ago. So, um, well, he says that he's not saying it is authentic. He's saying it feels authentic. Uh, so when you're watching it, do, does it doesn't feel authentic. Uh, Entertainment Weekly, a marvel of warm collaboration and shared jokes about husbands and wives shot both in dreamscape color and pristine black and white. Okay. So, I mean, the film does look great. It's worth seeing on the big screen. Washington Post, it's a mixture of wisdom and whimsy exemplified by the movie's unnamed and occasionally cheeky narrator. Now, that cheeky narrator is David Gulpilor. Makes an Australian movie feel as timeless as it is timely. And instead of feeling dutifully cultural as we immerse ourselves in this story, we're genuinely intrigued, touched, and even amused. Thank you, Washington Post. I mean, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that people overseas really enjoyed the humour of the film, right? And they really went with it as a comedy. So the question is, are you actually going to go with it as a comedy? Uh, now, here is a quote by Ben Goldsmith, uh, you know, the outward-looking Australian international cinema. Now, here, it asks what is atypical or shared and questions the function of cinema in articulating universal themes. Now, so what he's actually saying is... You've got to actually look not that at what's unique about the Australian national cinema, but actually what does Australian cinema have that sh is shared with other countries and other regions, right? And, you know, the fact that it's comedy I think is really important, the fact that it's this kind of Indigenous rural community. I mean, we're not the only... Australia isn't the only country that has rural Indigenous communities. And the fact that it's sort of set in this really old, 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 old time, um, you know... Again, it creates this kind of interest um, in it. Now, I just want to say a couple of things about um, Lynn McCredden, uh, professor of uh, literature, I believe, from, um, she's either a deacon or the trope. I'm not sure which one. And then she asked a number of um, pertinent questions across her piece, which uh, I thought was really, you know, really interesting and, you know, certainly some questions that we could apply to um, other things in the course. So uh, she is, what is the nature of real dialogue between different cultures? And what do we, what do you mean real dialogue? And what she likes is here is a film that's actually voicing different. I mean, the difference being that we're, we're watching this film, but the film isn't like giving us this, um, I mean, the issue is often when Indigenous Australians or Indigenous rural communities are shown and depicted in Australian cinema, they're depicted in silence. They're shown from afar and they're depicted in silence and they're not actually given a voice. And what she's saying is they're given a voice, they're given a cheeky voice, and the oral tradition of Indigenous Australia and Indigenous history, which is so crucial... Um, is prominent um, in this in this film, and uh, you know, like Rachel Perkins, the director of Brand New Day, um, and Jasper Jones, and uh, other things. I mean, she says the, the problem with tracing Indigenous history is the problem that what you actually have with Indigenous history is an oral tradition. It's an oral history. It's they're not. It's not like white fellas who write everything down and document everything right in written form, which can be consulted. It's the fact that a lot of indigenous histories is an oral storytelling tradition, which isn't recorded and isn't documented, 
And it's very, very hard to actually trace that from a historical point of view. And the thing that um, McCredden really likes about the film, Ten Canoes, is the fact that it really is exploring this whole idea of this oral tradition where characters sit around telling each other stories and, you know, often very humorous stories. Uh, another question she asks, can such dialogues move beyond mute recording or silent respect um, or automatic celebration? Which, again, another interesting question question another question can they enter a new space of dialectical relationship in which different cultural perspectives can be fully investigated without making the other culture a static or oversimplified or iconic abstraction now that's a really interesting question can they enter a new space so is rolf to here by showing a film set before white settlement a film in the aboriginal language or, or sorry not the aboriginal language a aboriginal language because you know there are numerous Aboriginal languages um, um, in which different cultural perspectives can be fully investigated right now. Now, this is the important thing about the question, without making the other culture a static or oversimplified or ironic. So it's not like you've got, here's an Indigenous community, here's a non-Indigenous community, and it just sort of becomes this binary, you know, one being the opposite to the other. You don't have that clear bi binary, that easy binary, which I think is really interesting in actually how the film's speaking to each other. Okay. Um, and she concludes uh, her piece, great piece, which is the uh, reading for this week. Uh, the film does make us, the film does make us confront difference and examine our own technologies and processes for engaging with that difference. So Indigenous Australia is, you know, is different to you know, how many of us are watching Australian films because we're not Indigenous, right? The film does make us confront different and ex difference and examine, so it's confronting in that we're facing difference and examine our own technologies and processes. So how do we actually engage and understand that difference in a film like Tenkin? Okay, uh, just some final thoughts. How does the film resonate for you or does it? Does this film has it have a resonance for you? Uh, what is memorable for you about this? How do characters play Australia? Now, th that's kind of interesting, you know, when you've got actors who are Australian and they're being asked to play Australian, play an idea of Australia, and, you know, what's actually going on with that and how do we actually make sense of that in itself? Um, you know, it's it's a hard film to understand because we're not often... We don't often hear the, the uh, you know, an Aboriginal language on the screen. So when we... With a film like this, which is all about that, you know, it's like we there's not that thing of we can compare it to other films. You know, they're doing similar things. It's it's very much playing on its own register. Uh, indigenous representation. You know, how are Indigenous Australians actually represented? And again, just this Australian accent and how and why are they used? Um, what do they depict? The Australian accent, this Indigenous language. The indigenous voice is an Australian accent um, that is mined and rooted and grounded in the very much the land of Australia. And I think that's, um, you know, worth thinking about as well. All right, so I'll leave it there. So Ten Canoes, uh, it's a comedy. And I think it's a really, um, it's a really fascinating film. It's, it's a great film it's such a seminal film in actually what it's actually doing with indigenous um, communities indigenous humor which is such a part of the Australian cinema and also just the accents I really want to concentrate um, on the accents and what you hear and how you hear it and how it's actually being presented for you how is it watching an Australian film subtitled is it something you like all right I'll leave it there and uh, look forward to watching this with you which uh, also does look terrific and it's just worth um, watching them um, make a canoe. So if you want to learn how to make a canoe, this is the film for you. Bye for now.